church. I love the way you worship God, and I love worshiping with you. And 
this is our time. This is our time set aside for us to come into his presence, to shake off the things of this world, fix our eyes on him, the beautiful face of Jesus. Lord, nothing compares to you. Nothing compares to your glory. Nothing compares to your holiness, Lord. And as we sing to you this morning, God, we ask that our praise and our worship is pleasing to you, God, that it is an incense that rises up to your throne.
might be feeling broken today, but we know the God that breaks every chain. The brokenness that we cling to is how he breaks things off of our life. The things that would restrain us, the things that would hold us down, death and sickness, disease, our God reigns. He is powerful. He is mighty.
and focusing on our Lord this morning. We're going to continue the act of worship by turning around and welcoming one another to Christ's Love Church. Church, how's everybody doing? Uh, everybody was excited to see, so that's so good, and I'm glad. Who's had coffee this morning? Anybody had coffee this morning? 
good. I'm glad. I'm glad. Whoever's making that coffee, man, shake their hand. Okay. Uh, hey, so my name is Mauricio. I'm the student pastor here at Christ is Love Church. We are a church that loves to uh, know his love and Oh, man. Know his love and share his love, okay? And I uh, just want to welcome our 9 a.m. Uh, digital service. Thank you so much for joining us. You are a part of our church. And we love to connect with you. There are several ways that you can connect with us. The Church Center app has a little place that you can hit connect. You can go on our website, cil.church, and you can find a little yellow button digital connect card, send us prayer requests, send us anything that has changed, maybe contact information. We would love, love, love uh, to have that so that we can pray throughout the week for you. Uh, I love what worship was kind of about this morning and how Beth said he's the king of this church. He's the king of our hearts. Uh, he's the king of our finances. Amen. And so we have to be faithful and obedient to that. And so we have several ways that you can give. I want to personally thank you for all of you that showed up to our youth fundraiser. Can we get one for, for that? That was so cool, all right? We converted the lobby into this hipster coffee shop and you guys just showed up. And uh, we had live performances, uh, so many good like desserts from people that have donated. And so we crushed our fundraising goal by a lot. So thank you so much for that. We are a giving church, I love it. And so there's so many ways you can give. You can go on Church Center. Uh, the app and go ahead and download that and you can give on there you can see our events you can see how to give and it is a great app so go ahead and download that and you can go on cil.church as well our website tonight is 242 groups 242 groups i love 242 groups super important since i order the pizza don't let me down <laughs> sign up your kids all right sign up your kids get your kids uh, signed up so I know how much pizza because if if Johnny doesn't get his pepperoni It's a rough day, right? So uh, make sure that you get your kids signed up for 242 It is nursery age all the way to fifth grade. We have something incredible happening next week water Baptism, it's one of my favorite things to do as a pastor water baptism. Can we just admire this picture? I love pastor Aaron Look at, man, he is strong. Okay, so we've got, we've got uh, water baptism next week. All right, it is going to be an incredible time. We're baptizing uh, two people. And so if you feel like, hey, I never uh, got baptized or I got baptized when I was super young, I don't remember, maybe it was at a church you don't really go to anymore, sign up, sign up, take the leap uh, and sign up and see what God does with this declaration of faith that you can do in front of the entire church. And so that is happening next Sunday, so show up. Something really great that's happening is Camp Blast. Camp Blast. It's called Camp Blast because the kids, they have a blast, okay? They have a blast. And so that's going to be May 31st through June 2nd. I was able to speak at Camp Blast last year. And I'm going to tell you right now, it is one of the most significant spiritual things that can happen to one of your students, one of your children. And you need to take them there. Take them there to Camp Blast. It is an incredible time. It's about 150 per camper. And if you feel like, you know what, we can't do it this year, finances are tight, economy, all that stuff, listen, uh, talk to Pastor Faith about scholarships because we want your child to experience Camp Blast. And so please, please, please sign up. Hey, I am sporting the new CIO hoodies. Anybody like these? It's like cream colored. Um, and if you are a deep autumn like me, uh, just, you know, you, you go for the cream color. All right, if you're more of a summer, okay, if you're more summer, we have another colorway. It's brown with white letters. Uh, these have just dropped. And so go out there. Go out there and get some, okay? They are really comfortable and soft. And I'm hoping Beth is, like, okay with me, like, just loving these hoodies as much as I do. Uh, they're great, so please sign up grab one uh, they are out there in the lobby hey after I pray middle school will be dismissed all right middle school will be dismissed we're not going to the living room because guys the middle school class has outgrown the living room we're I know we're up in the loft okay up in the loft and so uh, your teachers up there up in the loft go ahead and sit and uh, just join him for an awesome time all right let's pray father we love you and we thank you God we thank you for a, a Alive, vibrant church. 
God, that cares about the community, that cares about the gospel in such a powerful way. And Lord, I just thank you for these people. I thank you for the resources that you have provided and that we give through obedience. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, good morning to you guys. Man, let's go to Psalm chapter 4. Psalm chapter 4, so good to see you this morning. And uh, I got to tell you about something cool that's coming up, and that's uh, next Sunday. You know, Jacob Bell has been licensed pastor for a lot of years, worked at a few different churches and all that, but uh, we, we get to uh, witness his ordination to the wider body of Christ. Uh, yeah, let's, let's congratulate him. And so uh, we've been working with him through a process. We've been working with our, our network, uh, Converge, MSC, and uh, he's already been approved for ordination. So next Sunday night at 6 p.m., uh, we'll have a special service. We're going to have um, people from all over Middle Tennessee, different pastors who have influenced Jacob's life, come be part of this service. It's going to be, you know, about an hour. It'll be around, you know, till 7, maybe a little after 7. And uh, we get to dress up kind of nice if we choose to. It's not a... You know, not a prerequis prerequisite. There's no one standing at the door, like, going to judge, judge your, um, <laughs> your dress clothes or whatever. Uh, but if you want to dress nice, me and Jacob will be in suits and stuff. So it'll be a cool night. So that's next Sunday night at 6 p.m. What an honor it will be. Uh, and what happens is as the church witnesses uh, Jacob having uh, the prayers that are given to him, it will help mark his ministry through the decades. And he's going to remember uh, next Sunday night uh, when, when he has challenges or fond memories, he'll remember that night. So thanks for considering being part of that. So there's a couple of stories I want to tell you about to get this message started. They're not necessarily connected, but uh, they're, they're both about sleep. I have a friend of mine, he's from Oklahoma, and he's been a pastor here in Tennessee all these years, and he's like this tough guy, tough pastor guy, has a real country accent. He's real like, you know, like, I'm going to get the devil. We're going to punch the devil in the face today. You know, just kind of like a tough guy, you know, and he, 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 believe, he doesn't believe in sissy Christianity and all that. He doesn't believe in burnout. He doesn't believe in anything like that. He said something one time that stuck with me. This was like 20 years ago he told me this. He goes, there is nothing. I guess I'm going to do the accent now, right? <laughs> so, There's nothing like going to bed and being worn out because you've worked hard for Jesus all day long. You know, I thought about that. That is true. You know, I mean, there, there's been some times when, like, we've really worked hard. And at the end of the day, like, we're spent in the best way, like, in a good way. It's like, I'm going to bed tonight, and, like, I've, I'm not, like, out of balance here. I've just given a great effort to G, for Jesus. I mean, and, and maybe you'll feel that way. You guys who host 242 groups or who lead 242 groups, Man, you guys are amazing. I mean, I, the, the 242 leaders, I hope you honor your 242 leaders. I hope you honor them and support them. Uh, and, and those of you who lead Bible studies and stuff, Awana workers, youth workers, man, when you go to bed at the end of a good ministry night, you might be a little tired, but I hope it feels good. Like you put your head on your pillow and it just feels good and God gives you really good and satisfying sleep. One of my grandmothers, she was awesome, awesome woman of God. Just I could tell you all kinds of stories about her. I mean, she, she just impacted her neighborhood for Christ, impacted her church, her city, all that. Well, she was, though, really, really famous for her insomnia. 
okay? She just had trouble sleeping. I've noticed sometimes older women have trouble sleeping, and it's just, it's just I don't know what the deal is with that, but I feel bad for, I feel bad for anyone who has insomnia because it's kind of tough, isn't it, you know? And so I knew about this because for all, I could tell you all kinds of stories about strange things that would happen in the middle of the night. In fact, when I was a kid, she would actually wake me up about 2 or 3 in the morning uh, to feed me breakfast in the middle of the night, I think just because she couldn't sleep. So anyway, that was kind of one of those weird, quirky things about her. Uh, so as I was a young preacher, like in really, really getting to know God's word and starting to preach and, and, and kind of becoming known, at least in our little circle for that, one time she said, Aaron, I have a, I have a question about the Bible I want you to answer. I'm like, I'm ready, Grandma. Come on, man, I'm ready. I'm ready to answer this. She said, what do you think this scripture means for me? And, and the scripture was this, Psalm 127, 2. says, in vain you rise early and stay up late, uh, toiling for food to eat, for he, he gives sleep to the one he loves. <laughs> and I was like, I'm stumped on that one. <laughs> I'm stumped, you know. I'm like, sorry, Grandma. <laughs> I mean, like, you're like this godly woman, and I'm sorry. Now, you do sleep at other times, just not at night, you know. You, you sleep <laughs> during the day. So I guess it can apply that way. Uh, the title of my message today is A Good Night's Sleep. I want to talk to you. We're, we're continuing this Easter theme because Easter is not one Sunday. And in the church calendar, Easter is a season. So we're, we're continuing that. And I want to talk about a good night's sleep, and I'm not coming to you as a doctor. I'm not coming to you as a a, a medical professional, uh, as a mental health professional. I just want to say to those of you who are in those fields, we thank God for you. We thank God for doctors and nurses, pharmacists. We thank God for uh, mental health professionals. You guys do God's work. And you do a great work. I think it's always dangerous when pastors try to play psychologist, you know, a little bit and try to throw little things here and there. So I, I want to just take you to the Word today. I'm not going to try to manage all of the, the physical realities that come from, from our, our bodies and all of the emotional realities. I want to share with you Scripture. And I just want to encourage you that the Lord wants to use your sleep for His glory. And, and I think that all through Psalm 84, we're going to look through Psalm 84, and we're going to look at some principles that I want, I want you to impart into your life uh, directly related to your sleep. And so I think it will be a blessing to you. So let's start with Psalm 184, uh, excuse me, Psalm 4, uh, 1 through 3, and I'll present this as the word of the Lord. Answer me when I call God who vindicates me. You freed me from affliction. Be gracious to me and hear my prayer. How long, exalted ones, will my honor be insulted? How long will you love what is worthless and pursue a lie? Know that the Lord has set apart the faithful for himself. The Lord will hear when I call to him. This is the word of the Lord. Yeah, he does hear us. Here, here's my first observation. I'm, I have five of them today from Psalm 84. We're going to journey through the rest of Psalm 84. Guys, we're set apart. When you lay your head on your pillow at night, or those some of you worked the night shift, like, like Jalen, praise God, Jalen, who did our opening song, worked all night and then came to lead you guys in worship. Isn't that pretty cool? That's pretty cool. Talk about your, when Jalen, when you lay your head down later on, you're going to sleep good, and you're going to sleep and say, there's nothing like, you know, spending yourself for Jesus. But whenever you lay your head on your pillow, I think it's important that you remember that you're set apart. Because we know this, that at night, uh, or when we finally rest, is we start having random, crazy thoughts. And it's important that you realize you are set apart as a believer, that you are set apart for God's purpose. If you continue to remind yourself, if you go back to Psalm 4, and, 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 and you'll read verse, verse 3, you will be reminded of that. Know that the Lord, Yahweh, has set apart the faithful for himself. The Lord, Yahweh, will hear when I call to him. God with a name, our God with a name, Yahweh, our Jehovah, he's known as in the King James interpretation. He has set apart his people. He has set apart the faithful. And so we begin to process information differently when we realize that we're set apart. 
When we, when we just think we're just one among billions on this planet, and we don't realize that we're set apart for the purposes of the Lord. Listen, as a believer, I want you to hear this. You are set apart for God. Hear this today, because this is going to help you. You, as a Christian, are different. You, as a Christian, are different. You know, Christianity is not just a, a position for our eternal status. Some of us, we want to be just like the world and make it into heaven. That is not how the sanctifying work of Jesus, that's not how it works. He identifies us as his own, and he places us and gives us salvation that we receive by grace. And then because of that, we are uniquely different. And learning to embrace that is going to bring so much rest to your life. You're going to sleep better if you know who you belong to. If you're trying to hold on to your life, then there's all types of thoughts that plague us in the night. Like, am I doing the right thing? And where should I be by now? Is this, have I blown my opportunity? But if we are the Lord's, we know that he is leading and guiding us daily because he has set us apart. You will think differently if you're a Christian. You will be impacted by the Holy Spirit in ways that are not like the rest of your friend group. So if everyone in your office or everyone in your school thinks a certain way and you think differently, that is because you've been set apart for God. You are under the Holy Spirit's conviction. You're under the standards of God's word. And I tell you all of this because this can bring you much help when you come to that time of rest. Now you understand this, that, that if not everyone understands your choices, if not everyone understands your standards, if not, under, if, if not everyone understands that you're convicted of things that even people in your church small group may not be convicted of, that's okay because if you're convicted of it, it's the Holy Spirit working in you. And this, my friends, will bring you an assurance and a peace when you rest. You will naturally develop standards, restrictions, boundaries, not to earn salvation, but it's the working out of salvation in you. You're not trying to earn your way into heaven, but because you, have, you are a citizen of heaven, heaven is working through you, changing your desires, changing your standards, changing your boundaries, changing the things that bother you. Yes, there should be some things that bother God's people that don't bother other people. And that's okay because we, we, we can know that some of the existential crises that we have, like who am I and why am I here and what should I be doing? Hey, we all have those thoughts. I have those thoughts all the time. I, I talk to pastors all the time. Pastors deal with those thoughts all the time. Uh, go to the place of prayer, then you know where you are. You, you are chosen of God. You are called by God. You, you, God is working out his salvation through you. You are a son. You are a daughter. You are his. And when you realize you're set apart, peace comes to your life. First Peter chapter 1, verse 14 through 18 reinforces this. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the desires of your former ignorance. So don't, don't let the way you used to think shape you, okay? But as the one who calls you is holy, you also are to be holy in all your conduct. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. If you appeal to the Father who judges impartially according to each one's work, you are to conduct yourself in reverence during your time living as strangers. For you know that you were redeemed from your empty way of life, inherited from your ancestors, not with perishable things like silver or gold, but with the precious blood of Jesus, like that of an unblemished and spotless lamb. He paid so much. He gave so much for our salvation. He gave so much for our sanctification. He gave so much for our purity. He gave so much so we could have his Holy Spirit abiding with us. It's okay to be different. It's okay to be apart. It's okay to be separate. For this is God's work in you. 
It's not something you're trying to manufacture. It's the outflow of the Holy Spirit's work within you. Now, I already told you that, that you know, sleep is important. And again, not, with, not to get into areas that I'm not an expert in, so I'm just giving you a personal testimony. I spent a lot of my life uh, trying to see how little sleep I could get by with. And, and I took a lot of pride in that. And that shifted that shifted in me, and I, now I take, I take sleep very seriously, okay? And, and I, I'm a big proponent of it, and I, I don't set alarm clocks, so I, I get up at the right time when my body tells me to, and I'm always on time to work, too, so that's another good thing. Uh, and if not, I tell the people ahead of time when I'm not. Someone from the back laughed, and it was a familiar laugh. Okay. Okay, so that was maybe the sin of pride there. Hey, I may sleep good, but I got a lot of pride too, you know. Yeah, I can be a time dropper, you know. You know, people are name droppers. You know, like, I met this guy, or I met this lady. Uh, yeah, I, I was up at 4.30 a.m. seeking the Lord. Yeah, that's what a time dropper does. Okay, so, uh, so because I take, I take sleep very seriously, I'm one of those people, uh, not to give you too much information here, but, uh, you know, like, I, I need the room cold. I need the room dark, and I have noisemakers that just give nice little humming voices. And then uh, poor Beth, there's a lot of reasons to feel sorry for her, but, uh, we're, we're, <laughs> you know, we're not exactly on the same sleep rhythm kind of thing, you know, and, and it's like the smallest light comes on. I'm like, whoa, it's like the sun has come on, and it, it's all, it disturbs my personal ecosystem. Uh, and so, yeah, uh, like I, I, I wear masks sometimes, and if you ever see a guy that looks kind of like me, like in the airport lobby with a mask on and his head back, it's probably me. I take naps before I get on the plane with the mask on and pride left me a long time ago because sleep is an important thing and sleep is a good thing. Uh, and here's one of the great things about sleep is that, uh, and here's my second observation is being still. Isn't it interesting that even the most powerful person, uh, the, the leaders of the world still have to sleep? At some point, they may get away with it for 48 hours at the most, uh, but we have to sleep. When we don't sleep, we don't function. There's a stillness. And God, God has designed our bodies to shut down. And as, as powerful as we think we are, we still have to stop thinking and we have to stop moving and we have to be still. And in that stillness, I believe the Lord speaks. I know that he does. I know the Lord continues to speak. Look at Psalm 4.4. 4. So now we go into some new scripture for this sermon. Be angry and do not sin. Reflect in your heart while on your bed and be silent. Isn't it interesting how the anger we deal with often starts to percolate when we go to sleep at night. And, and I think it's a good thing to learn to not sin in our anger. I mean, it's unrealistic to think that we'll never be angry because that, that's a natural emotion. And Jesus even demonstrated uh, he, a, a righteous anger. But uh, the Apostle James echoes what is here in Psalm, 4, in Psalm 4. He says, in your anger, do not sin. And notice is when you're angry, we're very vulnerable. We're very vulnerable at that time. And so, so what a time it is when we lay our heads down and we begin to shut our bodies down because you're literally shutting your body down and there's a process to shut your bodies down and again you can just you can apply that the way you need to but as you begin to shut your body down and then and you begin to shut your mind down also these emotions of anger come and you want to learn to be a, pe a, per a person who manage you, manages your anger and can give it to the Lord and can give that to him that's why I love what Timothy said first Timothy 2 8 says this, therefore I want the men everywhere to pray, lifting up holy hands without anger or disputing. In case you didn't know, the reason we lift our hands is the Bible encourages us to do that. Over 98 times uh, in one of the Greek words praise, uh, to dow means to lift your hand, but then often too, if you just look at the back of your Bible about lifting up your hands, that you'll find 10 or 12 examples of that. So that's something that's not that's scriptural. And so when we lift our hands, it's the way we praise the Lord. But I did notice this, is that like, you know, when, when I've got rage in me or anger or I'm just really upset about something, um, when, I, when, I, when I've got an argument with someone, I don't want to lift my hands. I don't want to do that. I just feel like I want to 
stay closed, man. I'm supposed to stay closed in. And so this idea of, of even our whole body is connected to our emotions. And so well, here we are. He's saying, I want men everywhere to lift up their hands without quarreling. I want them to lift up their hands without any type of restriction. And, and it's that freedom we have in our emotions, that freedom we have and to, say, to, to relate to God. And now I want to now apply this back to your emotions when you lay your head, head on, when you go to bed at night. That when, you, when your emotions are free and you're giving them to the Lord, and then the stillness comes over you. It's a stillness. And the stillness doesn't come over you unless you internally deal with something. Now, I know people say, don't let the sun go down on your anger. And for those of you who, who never go to sleep if you're angry at someone, way to go. You guys are more spiritual than I am or, or, or you manage your life better than me. I mean, sometimes I don't want to do that because I don't want the person I'm angry with to have to deal with my anger before it's going to mess up their night's sleep too. You know? And so I think it's more of a posture before God. And a posture to, posture to say, I want to get all of my emotions submitted to the Lord. I, I want to be, in the, and there's a stillness that comes with being with the Lord. When your spirit is still, you're free to worship. You're free to worship the Lord. And so as we begin, as you begin to apply Psalm 4 to your life, think about that, that you're going, you're going to deal with the anger in your life and not be so angry at people are angry at culture or angry at how the way your life is going. Instead, you trust the Lord. You trust the Lord. Trust the Lord is at work. Trust the Lord is at work in your family. Trust that the Lord is at work in the relationship. Trust that the Lord is at work in culture. Trust that the Lord is at work. And when you do that, that stillness comes over you. And that stillness gives you the ability, ability to have that deep rest. This leads to the next observation, trusting. Trusting. Look at verse 5. Offer sacrifices in righteousness and trust in the Lord. Offer sacrifices in righteousness and trust in the Lord. I want to speak to those of you who are either presently or you have in the past been high, high energy or high level volunteers at a church. And I want you to know that that's a sacrifice. It's a sacrifice sometimes to come early to do ministry. It's a sacrifice to stay late. It's a sacrifice to open up your home. It's a sacrifice to come and, and to fulfill uh, your volunteer responsibilities when maybe you would prefer to go to brunch that day. And I know sometimes it's a sacrifice. Some of you give financially, and, and if you allow the enemy to plant this thought, he could, he could plant the thought, oh, I could have done something better with that money. I don't want to plant that thought. I'm, I'm letting you know that it can feel like a sacrifice sometimes to give to the Lord. To give your time, which is the most valuable thing you have. To give your resources. To give your leadership. Uh, to, to give yourself to the community. And sometimes people that you do ministry with, maybe they're not as mature as you are or developed in that area. Maybe they're not as skilled. And there's a sense of, of sacrifice. And I, I want to speak to you with this. Trust the Lord. Trust the Lord with your sacrifice. Trust the Lord with what you give. Trust the Lord if you're not appreciated. Trust the Lord if you're not recognized. Trust the Lord if things uh, are, are happening that, that people don't quite understand. And I want you to be encouraged by the scripture in Hebrews chapter 6, verse 10. For God is not unjust. He will not forget your work and the love you demonstrated for his name by serving the saints and by continuing to serve him. Isn't that a good word? That's such a good word. It's such a good word for those of you who are giving to the Lord. I, I wasn't going to tell the story, but, but it's right before me. I think about Dana Thornburg, who for years and years has been a volunteer in the nursery. A volunteer in the nursery. And one time she told me that the, the two and three-year-olds forget her. <laughs> it's all this love. She, and, and she wasn't upset about it. She was actually laughing about it. But all this love you give to the two and three-year-olds and you love them and, and you, you care for them and pray for them and give them a great experience at church. And then the next year, it's like, hi, little, little Carson. I was trying to think of a name from the last decade. Uh, <laughs> instead of Johnny or something, Carson or or Bailey, or whatever. Hi, Bailey, or whatever. And, and little Carson or Bailey is like, who are you, stranger danger? <laughs> hey, the Lord doesn't forget that, Dana. And I'm not just 
honoring Dane, I'm honoring all of you who work in the nursery, all of you who work with the kids. The love you give to those babies, they may not give it back to you. Maybe elementary kids and junior high kids aren't sophisticated enough to say, thank you so much for being there for me and, and helping me learn God's word. But the Lord doesn't forget. The Lord doesn't forget. And let Hebrews 6.10 be encouragement to you. The Lord doesn't forget. He will not forget. And the Lord takes care of his servants. And the Lord takes care of you. And trust the Lord in that. Trust the Lord. If you, if you worked hard in ministry and everyone started bailing for the 242 group an hour before. And you spent too much money on food. Trust the Lord that the Lord's still at work. And he's going to reward you. He's going to He's going to pay you back. He's going to watch over your gifting. And so I, I said this specifically to connect it with the phrase sacrifice and righteousness. Trust the Lord. That's why I've emphasized ministry this morning. But guys, we need to trust God in a lot of different areas when we lay our head on the pillow at night. That's a great reason to trust the Lord. Sometimes we've been avoiding thinking about a situation all day long and then as our mind is starting to shut down and our body starting to relax. These thoughts start coming to our heads and we're like, oh no, the cycle restarts. Trust the Lord. Trust the Lord that God loves your kids more than you do. Can you trust him in that? That God loves your kids more than you do. And he's going to take care of them. And he, he's going to take care of them. Boy, we don't want our kids to ever have a disruptive emotion, do we? But those disruptive emotions are part of their maturation. And so we've got to trust God. We've got to trust God that he's at work even when they're sad. We've got to trust God that he's at work even when they're at home that night when they prefer to be out or be with someone else, that the Lord is watching over that. You've got to trust him in that. Trust that God is at work through our singleness, that God knows this era of our life and he has a plan of whether we are to be married or not at that moment in life. Or maybe you're a widow, or maybe, maybe you are, you've had a divorce that you didn't want. These are tough things. You've got to trust God in our singleness. Trust God that he will provide for us financially. That's why I'd never recommend if you want some practical sleep advice, don't balance your checkbook before you go to bed. <laughs> Do it in the morning. It gives you, you know, 18 hours to work it out in your head. Anyway, you can't do anything. The banks are closed anyway. So if you're withdrawn, you know, you can't, you can't do anything. So you might as well wait. But seriously, it, you, you, you have a lot of financial worries. Trust the Lord. Trust the Lord with those financial worries. Trust that we're not alone. Trust that we're not alone. You know, married people can feel very alone at times. Sometimes the most alone we feel is when we're in a crowd or in a dorm room, a, 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 you know, a dorm building or whatever the case is. And so trust that you're not alone. You're never alone. Uh, never alone. The Holy Spirit's with you. Your God is with you. Trust in these things. It will go good for you. Now, I, I already mentioned I like a dark room when I sleep and all that. And that's good, uh, but the scripture talks about darkness as a metaphor, and that's not good. That's bad. A darkness as a metaphor. And so here's the next word I want to give to you, the word bright. When you sleep, I want you to think about brightness. And again, because of my previous comments, I'm not talking about the room. I'm talking about what's going on in your soul and with your spirit. And, and there's a brightness that comes from Christ. Christ, the light of Christ is on you. And there's a brightness, a lightness that comes from walking with the Lord. And the more you walk with the Lord and the more that you begin to, uh, to design your life to connect with the Lord, it gets brighter on the inside. There's a brightness that comes from him. Look at verse, the next verse here, verse 6, I believe. Many are asking, who can show us anything good? Isn't that the question of this culture? Can you show me something good? Can you show me a leader who's not corrupt? Can you show me a system that isn't flawed? Can, can you show me? Many are asking, who can show us anything good? Let the light of your face shine on us, Lord. 
What's the light? That's the glory of God. What's the glory of God? The glory of God is all of his power, his holiness, his purity, his love. Everything about God is his glory. Everything about God, the essence of who he is, his glory. And, and we're saying, Lord, the world is asking, and maybe I'm asking, forget the world, maybe I'm asking, who can show us anything good? Lord, let the light of your glory, the light of your face shine upon us. And I'm just asking that the Lord would do this for you. That when you go to bed at night, that you would begin to see the goodness of God. You'd begin to see things brighter. You wouldn't see darkness on every conversation. You wouldn't see darkness on, on every innuendo. You wouldn't see heaviness. You'd begin to see glory. You'd begin to see goodness. You'd begin to see light. You'd begin to see uh, the Lord's working, the Lord's power that's at work, the, the Lord and his providence that reigns, his sovereignty. Even when we don't have the answers to the questions, we know the God who holds all answers and we trust him. And, and honestly, working with people all of these years and even working with me, some of my internal struggles, I can simplify a lot of things. A lot of people either see God as bad or see God as good. And there's a lot of reasons for that. And of course, we're not gonna try to solve all those. But I'm just inviting you to begin to look at, and look for the goodness of God. Look for the goodness of God and expect the goodness of God. I think about, you know, we've been through at least, I've been through three tornadoes in this area, and, and all of them have been so stressful. And, and, and talking to people afterwards, you know, it's like people who've had their property damaged, and things have been misplaced, and a lot of them are like, well, God's good. Well, how, you know, how can you say that? There was a natural disaster. It came your way. Well, God's good. It could have been worse. Or, you know, my kid was at home, but I picked him up 15 minutes earlier, and he would have been in that room. And, and, and I just see God's people uh, choosing to see the goodness of God, choosing to see the glory of God. I mean, if you want to push God out of your life, you can do that. He gives us a free will. You can begin to be suspicious of God. You can begin to marginalize God. You can begin to put... Uh, attributes of a human sinful person upon God and, and that opportunities before us are we can say, Lord, let the light of your face, your glory shine upon us. Let us see your goodness. You guys, uh, one, of the, one of my most helpful quotes came out of a very helpful book. I shared it with you last year, but I felt led to share this again from Dallas Willard. And he said this, you must find the goodness of God. You must find the goodness of God. I want that to rest on you. Otherwise, you will not believe that he's done well by you. And you will not truly be at peace with him. That's so true. If you think God's done you wrong, you'll never see his goodness. You'll never see the light of his glory. And, and your thoughts will torment you, will torment you when you go to bed at night. But when you choose and, and ask the Lord, help me to see your glory. Help me to see your goodness. Help me to see, God, the light of your glory. Then it begin, the darkness begins to flee. The darkness, and, and even though you may have, like me, you know, lights down, mask on, noisemaker, all that, there's a stillness and there's a brightness in your spirit. There's a brightness in your spirit. There's a lightness. Instead of that heavy burden that just weighs you down, and sometimes it makes you not even want to get out of bed. It, there's a lightness, a buoyancy that helps you. Like the, the goodness of God is on me. And, and I don't expect my words to solve that like right now. But I, I do feel like this, that some of you can change your perspective right now. And over the next year, over the next decade, over the rest of your life, things can be different for you. I believe that you begin to say, I'm going to look and expect the goodness of God, even through tough times, even through hard situations, I choose to see the goodness of God. And then you have something called more joy, more joy, increase of joy. Look at verse seven, but you have put more joy in my heart than they have when their grain and new wine abound. Hey, who are they? He's talking about people who don't care about the Lord, people who don't care about Scripture, people who don't care about the goodness of God. And sometimes those people are really rich. Sometimes those, kids, those people have 
their kids are really good musicians and really good at sports and really good at math and really good at, at, at science and all that. And so it, there, there isn't this in this world because the goodness of God is for all people. It, it, it isn't always like, okay, I do good and I'm better than everyone else. But there is a satisfaction that there is joy in our hearts that billionaires can never buy. There's joy in our heart that fame can never deposit in you. There's joy in our heart that all of the options in the world, if you had all access to money, because all money is is options. You can travel when you want to. You can go out to eat when you want to. You, you, can, you can give to whatever charity you want to. You can buy whatever clothes you want to. All money is is options. Let's, let's just be that. So you have all the options in the world that cannot give you the joy that comes from knowing your creator revealed through Jesus Christ our Lord. That, that's everything. That's everything. I'm going to invite our ushers to begin to position themselves. And I'm going to keep preaching while they get all the communion stuff ready. All right. I love this scripture. Psalm 84, 10. I've said 84 a couple of times instead of four. Better a day in your courts than a thousand anywhere else. I would rather stand at the threshold of the house of my God than to live in the tents of wicked people. Guys, I'm going to tell you this. Some of you need to read these scriptures in Psalm 4. Some of you need to read Psalm 84:10. Can I just tell you this in love? Can I tell you this as your pastor? You've got a small view of this world. You've got an immature view of God. You've got a small view of the glory of God, and it's bringing you down. It's making things heavier. It's impacting your very sleep because you're full of strife towards God. You're full of contesting God. You're, you're challenging the goodness of God instead of receiving the goodness of God. And I want to tell you, the enemy wants to confuse you. The enemy wants to come and confuse your thoughts. The enemy wants to take you into a dark place. He wants to take you to a place of darkness. Some of us, we're attracted to darkness. We're attracted to heaviness. We want to hear music that makes us sad. We want to watch shows that make us sad. We want to, we want to have all darkness around us, and it's become an addiction in our life. And I just want to speak over you. The light and the glory of God is your inheritance. It is your gift. The Lord is good. The Lord is great. The Lord's goodness is for you. It's not something to question. It's something to receive. Receive the goodness of the Lord. And then here's my last observation from Psalm 4. And then there's something that I believe is a gift for you. Peaceful sleep. Peaceful sleep. Even for my grandma, she slept peacefully during the day. Maybe it's not at night. But there's a, there's a peace that comes over you when you prioritize the things of God. And he is your delight and he is your love. Look at verse 8 of Psalm 4. I will both lie down and sleep in peace for you alone, Lord, Make me live in safety. Come on, this is, this, is, this is a promise. I want you to claim Psalm 4.8. You're not going to lie down and sleep in distress. You're not going to lie down and sleep in confusion. You're not going to lie down and sleep with hopelessness. You're not going to lie down and sleep with a fog over your emotions and spirit. You will lie down and sleep because he alone makes you sleep in safety and be in safety. And this is the inheritance we have as God's people. Here's the last scripture that I want to read to you. It's out of Hebrews chapter 4, verse 9 through 11. So then there remains a Sabbath rest for the people of God. For whoever has entered God's rest also rested from his work as God did from his. Let us therefore, look at this, strive to enter that rest. Isn't it interesting the word strive and the word rest go together? Like we've got to we have to design our life to walk in the rest of God. Just like you've got to, I do believe this, you've got to prepare for a good night's sleep. I believe that. So that, let that be some wisdom for somebody in here. But bigger picture, being, we strive to enter that rest so that no one may fall by the same sort of, disobedient, uh, of disobedience. Guys, it's a life at rest. Even on busy weeks, even when demands eat up your time, even when your sleep schedule is off, because that happens from time to time. 
even when you don't feel your best spiritually and you're behind on Pastor Jacob's Bible reading plan, no one say amen to that, but you know, even when that happens, there is rest for God's people. Rest for God's people. And that is what he has for us. Let's pray together. Lord, we bless your name. We thank you, Lord, for the rest that comes. We thank you, Lord, for the rest that comes. We thank you, God, that through Jesus and through the gospel, we receive rest for our souls. Through Jesus and the gospel, we receive rest for our souls. Rest from sin. Rest from confusion. Rest from a life that is without purpose. Less, we have rest from our search for meaning, for we have found our meaning in you, O oh Lord. And we thank you, Lord, as we prepare for communion today. Lord, we, we are relying not on music, church music, not on a preacher. We're not relying even on a church. We're relying on the God of the church, the God of the sermon, the God of the music. Your name is Jesus, and we put our faith and trust in you. We put our faith and trust in you. Here in a moment, I want us to stay in the attitude of prayer. The bread and the cup will come your way. I invite you to take the bread and take the cup and hold it. Then I'll come back later in just a couple of minutes and lead us in a prayer together. You're not required to take communion. Sometimes Christians decide not to take communion on a particular week. But everyone is welcome to take communion. And I'll come back and I'm gonna pray for myself, but I'm gonna lead you in a prayer because every single one of us will have the chance to get right with God before we eat the bread and drink the cup. So hold the bread and hold the cup when it comes your way. Father, now we dedicate these elements to you. We thank you, your presence is with us. In Jesus' name we pray.
Well, before Jesus came through his wisdom to this world and lived a sinless life and gave himself, gave up his life for us on the cross and then proved he was God through his resurrection. Before that, there was no rest for God's people. There was no rest. It was all paranoia. Did I follow the law right? Will I be under a curse or a blessing? There was no peace with God without Jesus. But now, peace is ours. And rest is something that we live in. It's not just about the few hours we sleep. It's about a mindset that we have a mindset of rest. The gospel of Jesus Christ is what gives us rest from the oppression of sin in this world. The darkness, wickedness, wickedness that that descends upon us, that's all around us. Oh, we have rest from that as God's people. We have rest from wickedness because the brightness of the Lord, and we trust the Lord, we trust Him, we trust Him. We are not to be so fixated on this life that we're depressed at certain points and ages of life because we're comparing ourselves to others in the world. No, we have eternity to enjoy with God. We have a whole life to enjoy with God and a life that is to come forever and ever and ever. Our minds can't even conceive what God has prepared for those who love him, those who are called for him. It gets better. I hope you're having a great life. I do. I I believe that. I want you to have a great life. But even the greatest life in this room, that's so subjective, the greatest life of someone watching us, doesn't compare to the glory that awaits us. There is, it has no comparison to the greatness of the life that is to come through Christ Jesus our Lord. And so that's why we, as people of repentance, turn to the Lord. We turn to the Lord and receive his forgiveness and grace. So let's do that now. Father, we come to you. And Lord, we turn our hearts to you. We turn our hearts to you this day. We turn our hearts to you today. If you, for, if you don't know if you're a Christian and you're like, I'm holding this bread, I'm holding this cup, but I don't know if I'm a Christian and you want to make sure today that you're a Christian, you want to make sure and you want me to be a witness of that, would you raise your hand right now if that's you? You're like, I have doubts, but I want those doubts to leave right now. Just raise your hand. Raise your hand. Thank you, sir. Anyone else? Anyone else? Maybe that was for one person I needed to. Is there anyone else? Anyone else? have any doubts, just raise your hand right now. It's for the Lord. It's for the Lord. It's not for me. Anyone else? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. So now, would you repeat this prayer after me? I'm praying it for myself, but I'm going to lead you in this prayer. Everyone in the room say this. Jesus, I believe you are the Son of God. I believe you are God. I repent of my sin. I turn to you. I trust you for my salvation. I receive your grace. I receive your forgiveness. I receive your sanctification. Change my life. Lord, you've heard the prayers of your people this day. No need to repeat now. But Father, I thank you for uh, turning our hearts to the Lord so that our souls can be at rest. And every night when we go to bed, every day that we go to bed and when we wake up, we will know that we are at rest with our God. We are at rest with our God because of what Jesus has done for us. Hold that piece of bread in your hand. This little wafer represents the body of Christ as we remember his death, celebrate his resurrection and proclaim Christ is coming again. Let us eat the bread together. The cup you hold in your hand represents the blood of Jesus. As we remember his death, celebrate his resurrection, and proclaim Christ is coming again, let us drink the cup together. you're able to, can we stand together?
And uh, I know our time is a little, little past where we usually go, but I, I feel like I need to give a word of encouragement here. If some of you are struggling with your sleep, don't leave, don't take away from this message that something is wrong with you. Our God doesn't love you like hard that there, there's something wrong with you. I want you to take Psalm 84, it's Psalm 4, chapter 4, and Psalm 84, 10, and, and just meditate on those and just let, let, this, let this teaching just encourage you that the Lord is watching over you. I don't want anyone to leave discouraged today. The Lord gives rest to you. The Lord gives rest to you. And, and, and the Lord speaks to me often in the night, often when I can't sleep. Sometimes the Lord is speaking, and so maybe that can encourage you in that too. And so please, please apply this message for you who are caretakers, for those of you who are taking care of children, for those of you who are working the night shift. Grace is upon you. This is, this is not about everyone falling asleep at 10 and getting up at 7. This is not what this, this message is about. This message is about incorporating these spiritual principles when our body goes to rest and when our mind relaxes and let the, let the truth of Scripture guide you during those times. Guys, I'm going to give a blessing, and then um, Pastor Mauricio and I will be up here to pray with you. Request you have any need in your life, and other prayer partners will be coming too. Would you receive this? May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord turn his countenance towards you and give you peace. I love you. Jesus loves you. If you're visiting and want to meet me, I'll be here at the front. If you want prayer, we'll be down here to pray with you. God bless you.